This is Egypt's new administrative capital, located just 45 kilometers east of Cairo. This is a desert terraforming project covering 714 square kilometers, with government district, residential areas, business district, cultural and educational institutions, health cares and parks, and transportation infrastructure with a high-speed monorail. The cost of Egypt's new administrative capital is 60 billion and funded by the Egyptian government along with various private investors and international organizations and countries such as China, Saudi Arabia and other countries. It is expected to be a major driver of economical growth and foreign investment and will be home of more than 5 million people generating more than 90 billion in annual revenue. While this all sounds positive, there is a negative side to this project. Egypt is a very poor country. Average two-bedroom apartment in this capital will cost 50,000, while the average income of Egyptian household is 4,000, which put living in this capital out of reach of 90% of Egyptians. With all high time inflation and unemployment rates, Egypt's new mega project could be what bankrupt this country. There are many reasons why Egypt is moving its capital, and not all for the benefit of the Egyptian people. Cairo and most Egyptian cities are situated on the Nile Delta and the banks of the Nile, where the climate is not as harsh, which allowed for agricultural and city growth. Add on top of that bad urban planning that resulted from years of government neglection. Cairo is overrun by pollution, mismanaged suburbs and barricades around government buildings. The population has also grown very rapidly from 26 million in 1960 to 109 million today. And it is predicted that Egyptian population will double by 2050. While this seems like a case of poor city management that can be fixed by improving those municipalities and suburbs, the government has always neglected this issue and always looked at the desert by constructing new cities to solve this problem. Over the years, the Egyptian government constructed many cities in the desert such as 10th of Ramadan City in 1977, 6th of October City in 1979, Sheikh Zayed City in 1995, the new Cairo city in 2000, Al Shuruk city in 2004, and Bedar city in 2008. This trend has been going for 50 years now. However, those cities offered unaffordable housing where only 3.2% of the population lives in those cities. While the prospect of those cities were not as high as it was thought to be, pitching the idea of building desert oasis capital that breaks world record in several categories was not that difficult for the government. Plus, this new mega project promised employment for many Egyptians for years to come. The project began construction in 2015 with the construction of the government buildings and the whole project is expected to complete in 2030. This includes government districts, residential areas, business district. The new capital will have the tallest building in Africa, called the Iconic Tower, with a length of 385 meters. There is also another mega tall skyscraper, and will become the tallest building in the world at a height of 1000 meters, called the Abolisco Capital. There is also transportation infrastructure, such as airports and highways, and a high-speed monorail. The new capital will also include the new military headquarters, which will be the largest in the Middle East and the world, called the Octagon, inspired by the US Department of Defense, the Pentagon. The biggest beneficiary of this entire mega project is the military, which oversees 51% of the project, while the remaining 49% to the Ministry of Housing. The military will earn the majority of revenue from selling housing units in the new capital and also revenue from selling and operating the vacant government buildings in Cairo. There is another reason why Egypt is moving its capital. Back in 2011, El Tahrir Square was overrun by protesters to overthrow Hosni Mubarak, the president of Egypt at that time. 
Taking control of this square has facilitated the uprising against his regime. The current president of Egypt, Abdel Fattah Sisi, understands that taking control of this area will make it easy for protesters to march to the presidential palace. Moving to the new capital will make it difficult to start a revolution, as everything will be controlled and protected by the military. Therefore, moving to the new capital will keep the Sisi in control. The new capital city is expected to be a major driver of economic growth. It will be a home of more than 5 million people and will generate more than 90 billion in annual revenue. This will create a strong economic base for the country and attract new investors. Yet, the potential benefit cannot justify the cost. The debt the government has gone to finance this project is a huge. Egypt's gross debt is to reach 92.9% of GDP in 2023. This will be the highest ratio since 2018, leaving the country in a serious deficit and foreign debt, and puts Egypt at a serious risk of defaulting on its debt. But the issue goes beyond just financial aid. The issue is with the scale of this project. This is a 714 square kilometer city, which is as big as New York. While yes, a lot of success has been seen in building cities on a large scale in deserts such as Dubai. Dubai took almost three decades to get to its current shape, and it is only 35 square kilometers, a fraction of what Egypt is trying to achieve in only a few years. Plus, United Arab Emirates has oil money, which facilitated the growth without going into debt. Egypt is a very poor country with a very low household income of less than 4,000. With many ongoing issues and crises, such as the cost of living due to inflation and the ongoing issue of the Nile River drought, all these factors do contribute to the harsh environment Egypt is living in. So was it all a big mistake that could send the country into chaos? Not necessarily. While there is a proof that infrastructure does attract foreign investment, especially when you have a badly designed city such as Cairo that kept getting worse over the decades, and a government who kept ignoring Egypt's overpopulation problem. However, building a new city at such a scale at once is very concerning. If this project has been done in stages, this could have far less devastating consequences than borrowing large amounts of money at once. This project is still under construction, with the plans for completion in 2030. However, it is likely that this will take even longer. This means more money to be borrowed. This city will only be accessible to the wealthy 10% of the population who can afford the cost of living, leaving the rest of the population in poorly managed cities. While the Egyptian government stated that the new capital will include affordable housing, there is no actual plans when this will happen. The lack of public transport to the new capital is also concerning. Building a monorail that will not be integrated with the current rail system and does not have the same high capacity as other forms of rail transport. This city is 45 kilometers away from Cairo and only 11% of Egyptian households have access to a car. This means that this city, although with its prestige and grand design, it will not improve or change the livelihood of 95% of Egyptians. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the Young Hero Engineer. I will see you in the next video. Cheers.